Hi, my name is Jonathan Silva, trainer at Pragmatic Works, where we do everything from on demand learning, to virtual training, hackathons, and virtual mentoring. Welcome to the August 2021 edition of the Power BI Monthly Digest. For this video, I'm going to highlight some of the new features that are likely to be the most user accessible to start putting into some of your Power BI reports. And I really hope that you find something that you can take with you from this update and go ahead and start to implement in your daily use. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a report and some of the new features. So what you see on screen is a basic report we use on quite a few of our videos. And the first page we are going to look at is down here. And we're going to check out some of the new custom shapes that are available that we can use and how we can format those shapes to be used in our reports. If we want to go ahead and add a shape, remember, we're going to use the insert tab at the top. And then we're going to just go ahead and select a drop down for shapes. And when we do that, we can see all the different shapes available for us to use within our Power BI reports. And we're going to go ahead and choose the Chevron arrow shape to go ahead and play around with. And as we do that, just as with all the other shapes we have within Power BI, we can resize our shapes to make this one nice and big for us. And what we'll notice with these shapes is we have a few more options in our formatting pane. And when we look at this formatting pane, we can now um, customize these shapes and help that allow us to be a little bit more flexible with our design, our structure, and really stylize our ports uh, a little bit further than we ever could before. So we can see here, we can obviously still change the shape of our, or the fill of our shape by selecting the drop down. We can change this to really any color that we want. We can go ahead and select a blue. We can change the transparency as we've always been able to do. And with that, we can also set an outline. If we want to turn off the outline, turn it back on. We can add text on our shape, but we can really look in our shape even further. Now, if we select the shape option in our format shape pane there, we can choose to change our shape to any of the other shapes available to us. We can choose trapezoid if we want, or go back to that chevron arrow that we first chose. And when we look at the shape uh, formatting options, we can start to round some of these edges. And as we do that and add more pixels to these rounded edges, you'll see that the edges of our, of our chevron arrow start to get much more rounded. Now, I'm not quite sure if we want to use this blob shape here, but we're going to go ahead and put it back to its original style. We can also change the angle of our shapes. So in this case, we have a 90 degree angle that's listed here on our Chevron arrow. But if we go ahead and select maybe right there, we can get pretty close to a 45 or there's a 44 degree angle that we can have our arrow become. The same way we can make that angle go even larger. So if we want to go back to our 90, well, 91 is pretty close. We can even make that a lot further. Well, 140 degrees. You notice that the angle that we see in our Chevron arrow has changed. So we can really play around with a lot of the different format options that we can do. And if we want to copy and then add another one, we can now have a moving arrow type that we want to have within our visual. Pretty nice to use. Okay, we can select our visual, our visual once again, our shape, and we can format even further. We can add some shadows to this. So I'm going to expand this a little bit bigger for us to be able to see. If we want to turn on the shadow, we just select the on there. We can change the color of our shadow. So if we want to keep it black or make it, say, let's make it a nice green, we can decrease the transparency of the shadow. Remember, decreasing transparency means we can see it a lot better. So we can make it down to the 20s percent or even all the way down to zero. So it's fully there. We can also change the blur of our shadow. So we can decide that we want it to blur a little bit more so it's a little bit more faded there or even less. We can decide where we want the shadow to look. In this case right now, it's the preset is it to the bottom right, but if we can go ahead and we can choose maybe the bottom left, we can see the shadows behind the arrow in this case. Okay, we can also format the glow of our shapes. So now if we turn on glow, all the edges will now have a distinct glow on them. So we can go ahead and change the color of that glow as well. Let's change that maybe to, let's say an orange there. So you can see it right around the outside of the shape, we have a distinct glow and the shadow is still there on our left, our bottom left edge there, but there's now a glow on the outside. And so we can change the blur of that glow as well. A little bit more blurry if we want, less blurry if we want, 
really up to us. And now these new formatting options really let us as the user to reconfigure these shapes to the exact way we want to see them. Okay, make it the best scenario for us. Well, we'll go ahead and keep it that way. And let's go ahead and play around with the rotation. Now, when we think about the rotation of our shapes, we can rotate them on an axis here. Okay, so you can just simply rotate the entire shape in one way or another. Okay, we can do similar in, in that, or we can rotate the shape. And also, if we were to have text on our shape, we can rotate the text within the shape as well. Okay, so all these different fun options we can then take to customize each shape that we want to insert into our Power BI reports. All right, so the next new feature that we wanna highlight is the x-axis constant line improvement. And we look at our x-axis constant line. If I select this visual, you'll notice as I hover above a data point, in this case, we have our years, you'll see an x-axis line there. What we can do is now have a constant line to be placed on these Cartesian charts that we work through on the x-axis. And so if we wanna do that, we go over into our analytics view here. We can select the x-axis constant line and choose to add one. And when we add an x-axis constant line, we first have to select a value. In this case, again, we are using years. So we can start with our first value at 2007. Go ahead and select in 2007, we now see there is a line that is constantly placed on that X axis. And we could choose the line color. Let's go ahead and we can go back to our blue. We can decide the transparency of our line. 50% is set. Let's put it all the way down to zero to make it a little bit more bold. We can choose the line style as well. In this case, we could see that it's a dashed line, but we could choose a solid line or even a dotted line. I like the dashed line option because it gives us a little bit more. Um, visibility. We could choose to keep that line in front or behind the original line chart. We can keep it in front in this case. And also we can start to add a shaded region with this line. So say we wanted to say we wanted a shaded area before 2007 to highlight all of the time and space between before 2007. In this case, we're moving from 2005 to 2007. We can also adjust the transparency of that shaded area. So put it down to maybe 10% to be a little bit thicker or all the way up to say close to 90, as close as we can get to 90%. So it's a little bit uh, less visible. So making it 70, I think that's a pretty good one to keep. We can add a data label there as well. So you can see here in the top right quadrant here, we could see 2007 labeled there, okay? On top of that, we can decide to add in more lines. So if I wanted to add another x-axis constant line, we just come back up to the top here, select add, and go ahead and go through the entire process again. So in this case, if we wanted to say highlight 2006, we can go ahead and insert a line at 2006. We can again change the line color. Let's use a different color this time so we can see the visible difference. We'll make that a nice gold. We'll select our transparency all the way down to zero. So now it's popping out a little bit more. Okay, we'll keep our dashed line. Actually, you know what? Let's go with the solid line this time. We'll position it again in front of our line that we have for our line chart. And we're gonna add our shaded region after. Now, if we put a shaded region after and we change our color to the color we were using already, we can start to see that what populates is now we have a distinct area prior to 2007, but before 2006, we have a distinct area between the year of 2006 and 2007, and a distinct area after 2006 and 2007. So if you change around your, your shade colors, you can really set up a visual that can highlight specific regions, specific areas throughout your, your line chart, all through our x-axis constant line. And again, you can use this x-axis axis constant line and all the different Cartesian charts that we can uh, reference within our visuals and our reports. So again, it makes it much easier to visualize everything that we wanna play around with and to have our end user really have access to the data that we want them to see. Pretty nice. All right, and so let, then we can get into our third really big update that we see within this most recent August 2021 version is with our synonyms. 
Now, if we add in, if you could see here a Q&A visual and select that Q&A visual, we can play around with some synonyms. Now, this is not necessarily a new feature, having synonyms within our report and within our visual. However, now we can actually share our Q&A synonyms with others within our organization. So if we might use a different naming convention than someone else within our organization, now we can share those naming conventions across the entire tenant and allow every single person to access the data in their own way, but still leverage the same results. So in order to go ahead and share our synonyms, we're gonna come all the way up into the modeling tab. Then we're gonna to go to Q&A setup. Now, if Q&A setup doesn't populate for you, there's a couple other ways to make sure it's there for us. In this case, it's not there for us. So what we can do is go into file. We can go into our options and settings. And in our options, we need to make sure that within our data load and our current file, Q&A sharing is already set up. So if we set up share your, your synonyms with everyone in your organization, and we go ahead and save this, it should populate. Now, if it doesn't still, the way to get around this is we are gonna need to go ahead and share our report up to the Power BI service. So again, remember to do that, we have to select home. We can publish our report, select the destination. In this case, I'm gonna use our shared workspace that we've created. We're gonna, we're gonna share our report to the workspace there as it gets all the way through, just as we see every other time that we publish our reports, we can go ahead and um, watch it spin there. And once it's complete, as we well know, it will tell us that we can go ahead and access our report. Almost there, I know it really wants to, and a success. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we can do now. We go into our modeling view, our Q&A setup should be ready for us. And so now when I refresh my report, we could see that our Q&A setup is available to us. So we can go ahead and select Q&A setup again in our modeling tab. And in our Q&A setup, we're gonna select field synonyms. And when we look into our field synonyms, we can go ahead and add some synonyms that we want to use within our report. And again, remember, any synonym that we decide to add to our specific report that we choose to share to everyone in our organization, every single person within our tenant will have access to these synonyms. So let's go ahead and create a new synonym here, okay, on our customer table. We could see that all the other suggested terms are here. We can go ahead and maybe, let's select, we wanna use, have user added as a synonym, okay? We can keep that. And we, and we decide to share our synonyms with others within our organization. User will now be used as a synonym of the word customer. Well, let's go ahead and let's see some of the other synonyms that were also shared within our or my organization already down here on our states table. Now, if we open up our states table, we'll see that when you created a synonym and is shared out to others with the organization, when they, in, when they go ahead and access the Q&A visual and the synonyms, it will populate in their suggested term. You'll notice here that some of my colleagues here have played around with some of these synonyms already, and they've added a few for the term states. We'll see here we have Matthew. Jonathan is great at Power BI. I like that one. <laughs> Let's go ahead and add that one to our report to make sure it stays with us. We have Devin is cool. We have a lot of different synonyms of, available to us that we can use within our own specific Power BI report. Now, if you wanted to do this within your synonym settings on the Power BI service, you just go into your data load, your Q&A, and share them around with everyone else. Okay, additionally, Ad admins within the tenant settings can go ahead and change up how the synonyms are viewed within each of the organization settings. And the very last big feature that we have within this most recent Power BI update is within our mobile view of our reports. And I just went ahead and I opened up my mobile application here. And what you can see in our mobile view at the very bottom, there's a new report footer available to us that makes it a lot easier for us to use when we access our reports in the mobile application. So we can find and understand all the actions within our reports just here at the bottom, where we can go ahead and open and minimize the different report footers options there that we can play around with. All right, well, thank you for joining me today. Hopefully you found some new 
things that you can use in your current and your future reports to really take your visuals and your reports to the next level. Don't forget to like, comment, and, and subscribe below, and let us know what you really think about these new features. And I'll make sure to see you back here for our September 2021 edition of our monthly digest.